Hello and welcome to another IC3D Quick Byte. In today's Quick Byte, I'm going to be taking you through the high res image exporter. So the first thing you're going to want to do is once you're ready to export your high res image, go up to File, Export, High Res Image. Now there is a quick key for this and that's just Control E. This is going to open up the high res image export window. Inside of here, we've got a lot of different options that we can choose from. Now, the first options are going to be the width, height, and resolution of our render. Now, all of these can be changed from pixels to inches or millimeters, respectively. Each one of these, except for resolution, can be changed to that. Now, resolution can be changed to pixels an inch or pixels a millimeter. For width and height, this is completely dependent on your image. Now, I like to do a nice 5,000 by 5,000, but you guys may need to uh, change it depending on what you'll need. Now, of course, that is where I can show you now the constrained proportions. Constrained proportions will make sure that the width and height are locked together so that if you change one, the other will change with it. So as you can see, as I change my width, my height will come with. From there, exporting the alpha channel will allow you to export the background. Now, this will allow for transparent backgrounds and you'll be able to place your image on any kind of uh, unique background that you'd like. Now, this also brings the shadowing together or reflections, so make sure to uh, turn those on or off depending on your render. If you select the export alpha channel, you'll also see that we have a borders only option. Now the borders only option is only really useful for objects that are transparent and you can see through the background. Now what this will allow you to do is if turned on, this will take the background inside of say your transparent bottle and it will keep the white background or whatever color you have inside of your render view at the time. Now, turning it off will allow for a transparent background, and you'll be able to see any new background that you allow in there through your bottle. Next, we have an embedded ICC profile. Now, if you're unfamiliar with color profiles, I always recommend using the Adobe RGB 1998 as I'm using Illustrator as my connection, so I like to use the Adobe uh, Color Profile to make sure everything is set up. But of course, if you've got a color profile that you want to use that's unique to you, what you can do is head on over to your ICC Profiles page. Now this can be found inside of the Creative Edge software, Program Data, and again the IC3D path. I'll show it here. And inside of here, you can drop any new ICC profile. And once you go to export, you'll be able to see that in the drop-down list. <clears throat> From there, we have our output renderer. Now, this is only allowing us to choose between the standard OpenGL view or our high-quality RAS Ray Tracer. For today, we're going to be using the RAS Ray Tracer, but keep in mind that you're going to want to have the Render Manager set up if you want to use this option. I've got another video that will cover all of the Render Manager setup, so go check that out if you haven't already. The number of samples will allow us to change our quality of the image. Now, this is a little dependent on if you're running a GPU or a CPU. If you're running a GPU, you're going to want to keep this number of samples around 256. This is because the GPU rendering type is slightly different than our CPU, al allowing for a lower number of samples to achieve a same quality image as a 1024 at a s much quicker time. Now, if you're using a CPU renderer type, you're going to want to crank this up to 1024 if, again, your uh, goal is a high, high quality image. Now from here we can save Now from here we have one last option hide rear facing labels and displacement. What this is going to do is if you've ever seen any type of bottle that you can see through and to the other side of a label or the back side of a label, this option will hide that label or displacement from the front view. 
and then of course you can save all of your settings up here and allowing you to save as any kind of new name and then if you go up to your output presets you can quickly pick a one from the list as I have a 5k by 5k and that will make sure that everything is checked. From there, we can look at our camera presets. This will allow us to export one image or a multitude of images. To export just one, you keep it at current camera settings and we can go ahead and hit export. Now, if you wanted multiple views or if you wanted to pull the camera views that you've saved in the camera options, you can go ahead and hit the current camera settings and you can choose from the actual list of camera options or camera presets that you've saved and allowing you to export any view that you'd like. Or you can use a preset list and inside of the list option here you can export a multitude of views all at once. Use the preset zoom. This will use the zoom that's saved inside of your camera option. Use the file zoom instead of preset zoom. That's going to use the file zoom that you're looking at here instead of the zoom saved inside of the camera option. And then force fit view on preset change. This is going to go ahead and hit this little force fit to view option before exporting so that everything will be in scene when exported. And then of course you can also use your preset FOV and that's also saved inside of that camera option. From here we can go ahead and hit export as we are ready to go with our render. Now keep in mind this next window will only matter if you're exporting an OpenGL render. If you're doing what I'm doing here and exporting a render manager view with a ray tracer we're going to want to just go ahead and hide this and just give it a quick file name. I'll just give it test1 and hitting save. Then this ray traced output window should open and this is indicating that you have specified to output your file using the IC3D ray tracer. Ray traced output is managed and processed by the IC3D render manager. You will need to make sure that the IC3D render manager is started and running for your output to process. And would you like to continue? Just go ahead and hit yes on this. And of course, make sure your render manager is set up. And if it's not, go check out our render manager video. That should be somewhere in our page. Thank you so much for joining me, Adam Chop, as I took you through a quick export process of a high res image using the high quality ray tracing.